Okay. We're gonna continue this. I promised it now. No. You give it time. You sure? You have a notification for me. Okay. I'm gonna need you to be quiet for this. You have no idea how many times Gage has passed through my mind right now. Alright. Uh, due to the fact that the game has no auto-saving, or well, I mean it Mom does, but it- Mom blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. Due to the fact that the game After doesn't- he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room. Until Mom got him a job at the cannery. Due to the fact that the game does not let you save whenever you want, it automatically saves, so you kind of have no- I kind of have no control of where I start. So it kind of starts me the last time it saved. Everyone always told me to stay out of Lewis's room, except Lewis. Right, so no one let you get into Lewis's room because he was a, he did a lot of marijuana. All right, let's go see his room. Lewis's room smelled very, very mm. familiar. That part of him lived on. So all he did was do marijuana and play video games all day. Ooh! Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. I can see that. Where's the TV? How can you play if you have no TV, you monster? Legalize marijuana. Oh, that's trippy. All right. Lewis Finch locker contents. Wait, before I look at that, let me just look at this first. There is nothing here I can look at. He had a PC going on. Very crappy computer. All right. Don Finch. <laughs> 2141 Fire Weed Road. <laughs> oh my god, this dude. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. January. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the That's game, me, by the way. But he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... What? What? His mind began to what? Wonder. Oh, I'm supposed to control that little guy as well. What am I doing? All oh, right, give it a fish. I asked him to describe it. Up or down? What do you guys think? I'm not even letting, making him grab it. He's still... He said he started small. Imagining a labyrinth. Okay. He'd feel his way about. Then something new. Like a little or something. And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself.
But he found something more. Yeah? Uh, nope. Be I'll be right there. Just give me some time. My mom telling me to feed myself. I haven't eaten in a few days. I worried I mean, like, about him then. I mean, like daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss, but he said Lewis had become a model employee, methodical, tireless, focused. a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. Oh no, it seemed you got very him promising at first. You got him killed, didn't you? He told me he'd made a new friend. Oh. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. And songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. Oh my god. Why fish? He no longer spoke at the cannery. He's been his trucking was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him. All the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he won. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Lewisville. St. Louis. Ooh, dodge, dodge, dodge. He started drifting away from our reality because he was high most of the time. Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Well, how did he forget? Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a handsome queen. The game won't judge you for being gay, huh? The queen was on her own quest for Radiant rainbows. Radiant rainbows. It had rainbows in it. I had. And you found them. And you found another one. You were high most of the time, weren't you? He followed the sound of her. Silver harp. Silver harp.
His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. What the heck? He knew the world was all in his imagination. But he was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. It's become a legend. Oh, dang, you look pretty good. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was wow. overwhelming. Stories. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. Can I go back? No, I can. Well, after a long day at work, time for me to leave. Oh, we're, we're at the cannery. Let me guess, this is my locker. A little video game in here. He began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. I'm not playing as Lewis, am I? He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. Yep. We're not grabbing anything. It's wandering off again. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. Including the wise Calico, who insisted on advising him. I think you know. Mrs. Finch, your son, was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. Yeah. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. That's, uh... It's pretty hard. Jesus Christ. I hurt my head just thinking about it. 
I can smell the weed from the game. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's messed up. So he committed suicide after getting really, really high. Poor bastard. Oh, man. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. <laughs> I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. Are these more Milton posters? Yeah, they're Milton. But I understand why we left. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. The pictures. Oh. To teach and to learn. Seven ways to create a fulfilling classroom. The Win Finch. Oh, Don Finch. Oh my god. The Win. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. Edith. How we did we do Edith? Oh wait, yeah, I am Edith. <laughs> Just Edie and Don A and K. And Sanjay. Oh, no, that's your dad. Sven. But it had to end one way or another. Whoa. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. Oh, we're in your room. You live at the toppest top of your room or at the house. You're still right with the feather. That whole last day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. <laughs> Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you oh, know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific. I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last- I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. Oh, the pink one was Edith. Hmm. Oh, it's so dark. Let's see. The power had been shut off that morning. But Edie always had plenty of candles. Edie when my mom said the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. That thing you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. She was afraid of death. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. They died because of the stories? And here I am listening to the stories. We'll have the nursing Edith. home send a van for you in the morning. Okay. Dear Edith. There's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. Seems like it wasn't very good. It the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. You know, I've seen that house every day of my life. Edie was your grandma. Uh, but I never thought I'd go back to it. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. Yeah. 
I don't even know where I'm going either. Turned around. Okay. For a while, I wondered. Lady, were you on the marijuana as well? Okay, I guess I'm... Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. Ah, okay, this way. But when I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Wow. Are you still old? A little. You're not too old. You look in your 60s or 50s. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and... Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! No, give me back my book. I kicked and screamed, but Mom dragged me to the car. No! We didn't finish! What the hell, Mom? I never saw a great grandma Edie again. No! Granny! The next morning the van came to pick her up, but she was already gone. <gasps> Where'd she go? Did she do After that, we moved around a lot. Oof. Oh, that gave me the chills. Ugh. We both tried to make the best of it. We. I'm actually controlling that hand. We. A few years went by. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> oh, the rest you ruined my fun. Quickly. Oh. Don Finch. No. It's gonna show us how your mom died. She got better for a while. <laughs> and then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. Oh, I'm controlling that. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. Wait, what? If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. Wait, what? We've been playing as Edith this entire time, right? Uh, Sven, K, and Sanjay. Those are the only ones we don't know about. E we know Edie was the grandma and she died. According to her saying when the... No. I... Yeah, later. Give me a minute. Ah, I lost everything. S Sanjay, K, and Sven. Sven, um... Was the grandpa or the husband of Edie? Sanjay was your father, and Kay was. Um... We haven't talked about Kay, so maybe the character that we saw ourselves in the beginning of the game, you're probably Kay. I don't remember checking if they had gloves. I think they had gloves, so therefore, it probably was Edie. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. Whoa. Trippy. Wait, is that a butthole? What's going this on? This tunnel was supposed to be for you. Is that a butthole? Am I? Is, is someone giving birth? Oh no. Oh now no. I hope you'll never see it. 
no, please don't. I just uh, want to no, meet you. Uh, uh, no, no, please don't make it. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> and tell you all these stories myself. <laughs> I'm gonna puke. I'm seriously gonna puke. Please don't. Uh, <laughs> He's giving me bad memories. But I guess if you're reading this now. Things Harpy. didn't work out that way. Uh oh, I think this is where your story begins. Oh, I'm no. sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. No. <laughs> she had a boy. And that was her giving. Oh God. <laughs> That's disgusting. Oh. For Cheryl Dowles, nineteen forty-eight, two thousand thirteen. Sorry for your loss. Oh my god. Aim Dallas, creative director. When he was a kid. Joshua Servant, technical director. An awesome job. Kelsey and Ashley, technical artist. Good job. Raylan Martin. I don't know. I'm sorry. Oh my god. I'm not I'm not I'm just, I'm not angry about the birth thing anymore. Just sad. The character, I, 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 I had a feeling was it was that Edith was gonna die. That that I had a feeling that Edith was was going to die at one point in the game. I didn't actually think it was gonna happen. Is there anything of control anymore? No. Well, I guess that's. We've been through a lot. Then, like I said, this game, murder, or and death, the curse, it just made you, makes you really think about things that happened in the past. Whether they were real, lies, or, you know, imagination. This kind of pain is brought to us by, well, anyone whether they're real, fake, or someone that's been taunting our memories. Um, sometimes death is the only way to make us see what the world can offer. Or, you know, just makes us see things in a better way. We're looking at it from a different perspective. Death is something that we all see as something that's bad. Something that not everyone should have to go through. Jeff Russo. Russo Brothers. Um, but sometimes death can not only be bad for one person, but it can be good for many other people. And I had a similar experience with that. The death part. Over the past few years of my entire life, I've lost, like few people that I've known to love, one of them know and like or bit. And this game brought me back the idea of it as I played it. It reminded me of them, what I thought of them, and what they brought into my life. They brought back all the memories I had as a child of them and myself. And from their own death, I saw from a different perspective of who I really was. Looking back now, I see that back then I was not the person I am today. And thanks to them, I am now a better person after their deaths. I will not mention 
one of their names, but I will mention one of them. If I remember correctly, a few years ago, way long time ago, um, one of my aunts died. The other difference too. The end. Uh, a long time ago, one of my aunts died. Well, you know what? I'll talk to you about it later. Sanjay. So, back to what I was saying. Um, a few years ago, my aunt died, and the last thing I ever did with her, it's gonna sound a little funny, was um, I played a game of poker with her on the Nintendo 3DS for the Mario game, you know, the old Mario game. Um, and I played that game with her and we had a tie and I never got to beat her or lose to her anymore that was the last time I saw her before I saw her I went to the hospital we went to the hospital I didn't even know she was there I didn't know why we went to the hospital I just thought we were gonna go on a normal trip but my mom didn't want me to tell me I asked her why we were going but she just kept silent she didn't tell us a thing Camila was in the back of the car. She was very asleep. I was in the front of the car, just playing with my phone, hoping for the best. When I saw that we were gonna park out of the hospital, I started thinking. My mind was racing with the most, like, possible situation that we could be in. They were all wrong. Until it came on with one, one idea. Someone was about to die. We got in the hospital. Everyone I knew and everyone I knew was there. They were all crying. I looked at everyone around, seeing to see who was missing when I noticed that my aunt wasn't there. And that's when I looked at the door, the doctor came on and started asking my grandma a few questions. Then I noticed that they were start. Then, then they started talking about her, and I started to cry myself. I was started to cry too. It was the most saddest day of my life. We stood there for hours and hours, waiting for any type of good news. There weren't any. A few hours go by. I get sleepy. I want to go home. I, I was never there to see her. I never got to see her in bed. We were waiting out in the lobby while she was still at the doctor's. That's when she died. I didn't know she died until the next day. My grandma had taken me to her house just so I could sleep with her. I asked my mom what happened in the hospital, and she told me she had passed away. The funeral was going to be taken down in two days. She was buried. I wasn't there. It was the weekend. My parents had divorced, and I needed to go with my dad. I didn't get to go to the funeral. They didn't let me in the room. They didn't let me see her for the last time. I've never seen her again. I never got to tell her how much that game meant to me. Or all the memories that she's created with me. It was only one of the most saddest moments of my life. When I found out she passed away, Something in me just broke. Rage. I was so angry. So disappointed. 
that I was never the same again. I became a different person. Sometimes I just look back on myself and wonder if that outcome could have changed. Was there anything I could have done to change it? Till this very day, sometimes I still think I could have asked her for that rematch. But I never had the chance to do it now. So I told myself to live the life that I have to as much as I can. In doing so, I would honor her. Not only would I be honoring her, I would remember her every step of my life. And if I was to see her one more time, I would really love that rematch. Let's get back to the game, shall we? Replay a story. We never get to see Dawn, didn't we? Oh, wait, this brings us back here. It just lets us teleport. So I guess that's it. Oh, okay. Uh, we never get to learn about K. They mention it sometime during the story. Who's Ageborg? All right. That's I guess that's the end of the game. Hmm. The end of the game. Well, I guess that's it. That's all we've gone through. I got the sense Edie had spent a lot of time here. No, 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 no more dialogue. No more dialogue. No more dialogue. We're done. Well, uh, everybody, hope you enjoyed that video, the live stream. I am tired currently. I'm kind of hungry, and I'm gonna go eat some pizza. All right. Mm. It's been a fun what three episodes. I'm glad I um, got to play this game with you guys. And if you ever thought of anyone that's passed on in your life, please, please, if you want, you can go on ahead, place it down in the comments below. Make sure you uh, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can see my upcoming live streams. And I hope you guys enjoy your day. Remember those who have fallen, because they've never truly fallen unless you give up on them. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, next time. Bye.